Jeremy Scahill talk about Warsami. Well, when, when Admiral McRaven, who was the commander of the Joint Special Operations Command, um, appeared before the Senate for his confirmation hearings to become head of, of, of U.S. Special Operations Command, he mentioned that the U.S. military was holding certain prisoners near Somalia and Yemen on naval ships. Um, and, and then the next week after uh, in, this was in July in early July, the next week after McRaven made that statement, uh, the u s uh, announced that it had um, transferred a Somali man um, who had been captured in a boat between Yemen and Somalia and taken him back to the United States, to New York, and they uh, ch charged him with, uh, with terrorism related charges uh, and, uh, and, and this has ignited a debate about the Obama administration's um, stated policies regarding the legality uh, or, or lack of stated policies regarding the legality of holding prisoners incommunicado, commun in as Warsami was, for two months with no access to lawyers or the Red Cross, and then charging them in U.S. courts. Um, the, the Center for Constitutional Rights uh, put out a series of questions for the Obama administration to answer um, about why this is legal um, and why you're allowed to hold these kinds of, of prisoners on naval ships without any um, access to due process whatsoever especially if you're going to then charge them in civilian courts in the United States. Um, the, the other issue that's raised by this, though, is the case I've been talking about, th this Ahmed Abdullahi Hassan. His lawyers are preparing to file a habeas petition in the U.S., alleging that the U.S. is aware of his whereabouts um, and has access to him in this basement prison in Somalia. And, and, and it's going to be another challenge not to President Bush, but now to President Obama, um, on the um, assertions being made by the executive branch um, uh, regarding their ability to simply just hold indefinitely um, anyone that they believe to be a threat. And how does the so-called war on terror in Somalia, though President Obama is no longer calling it the war on terror, fit into the bigger picture of uh, U.S. operations in Yemen, in um, uh, well, throughout the area? Right. Well, I mean, this, these are the new battlegrounds um, for President Obama's interpretation of how, how to fight the, the, the war. He dare not call the war on terror anymore, um, although they, they constantly imitate all of the policies of Bush and take them even further. John Brennan, the president's top counterterrorism advisor, uh, a few weeks ago laid out what he called the new U.S. strategy, which is going to rely less on large conventional forces and occupying nations uh, and more on what he called surgical targeted strikes um, against individual terrorists. And, um, and so the U.S. has, uh, has uh, been dramatically uh, increasing its involvement in, in both Yemen uh, and Somalia, and has asserted the right to kill people in those countries without coming forward and saying, this is the law under which we're doing this. Um, and and a lot, there's a lot of questions being raised um, in the human rights and the civil liberties community about this. Deafening silence in Congress. No, almost no one in Congress will touch this at all. We're with Jeremy Scahill, investigative reporter, Democracy Now! correspondent, has done a major expose for The Nation magazine on uh, CIA secret sites in Somalia.